Hi, and welcome to the 20th episode of the Yarn Junkie podcast. My name is Amber. I am your host today. You can find me on most social media outlets as Yarn Junkie. On Ravelry, I am Yarn Junkie with the number six, and I do have a Ravelry group that has been a bit more active this week. So hi, all that have messaged and chatted in the group. You can also find me on Instagram as underscore Yarn Junkie. And thank you so much to my subscribers, to my viewers, to the friends and connections that I've made. I've really enjoyed doing this podcast and having all of you to chat with each week and show you my projects. So thanks for sticking around. I almost have 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel, which is just insane. I know that I've talked about having some other videos um, baby wearing related, so some of my subscribers were old from that, but since I've started the podcast, I've had lots of new people, and that's that's really exciting. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. Um, come to my group. Introduce yourself. Tell me what you like making. If you ever have any questions about the podcast or things that I go um, that I talk about but that I don't go into detail, I I am always um, pretty responsive. If someone messages me or posts a question in the group, I immediately respond to let you know that information that I'm usually terrible about making sure everybody knows. So today, I've mentioned that I wanted to have a different dog with me every couple of podcasts and kind of highlight them and talk about them since I have three. So this is Roger, and I've talked about him in a previous podcast. I can't really remember which one, but I inherited Roger when my grandmother passed away. She passed away two years ago, and Roger was one of her 20 dogs. But he took her death really hard, and he didn't really like being at my dad's with the other big dogs. He doesn't really like Bo and Lucy much when they rough house and stuff. He barks at them to tell them to settle down. He just doesn't act much like a dog. He's, he's more like a cat, cat dog. He likes to kind of hide when we have company. You cannot find Roger. He's off hiding somewhere, sleeping, <laughs> cowering under a blanket. He is a very... He's a very happy boy, and I really enjoy having him, but this isn't a typical dog that I would go out to a shelter and rescue. My grandmother loved this breed, and I very much like having him. He reminds me of her, and he's just a very sweet boy, but small dogs kind of, they're a lot to care for, especially if you live royally and have to worry about coyotes. Even midday, if Roger goes outside, I have to keep an eye on him because he's coyote bait. He's about seven, maybe ten pounds, and just just a very little guy. He's very sweet. He's got this little underbite, and so he always smiles, even though he smiles kind of grumpy, and he's shaking right now. He's, like, making me vibrate. But this is my little buddy, Roger, and I just thought it'd be nice to show you guys my little guy, Roger. He's a rat terrier mix. Now, when I take him places, I get told that he looks like a blue healer, and I also get told that he looks like a Dalmatian. So he is a rat terrier mix. He's just a mutt. My grandmother rescued him from the shelter. She's very, she was very much into rescuing dogs. And so she had him for about four years before she passed away. And then I got him. And my girls really love him and like to snuggle him. He didn't really like them at first, but he's really warmed up to them. And if we do have other little kids come that that he doesn't really know. Their fast movements scare him, and he has been snappy with them. So I do crate him if we have little kids come, just so he feels secure, and I'm secure knowing that he's not going to bite someone's fingers when they're trying to pet him. Because he's very, he's just intimidated, and he thinks, I must attack you before you try to hurt me. And I'm sure that's probably because of his history of being in a shelter. He probably was abused before that. He's Standoffish with my husband. He does like men that are smaller framed. My mom's husband, and we have a really good friend that is a small build. He loves those men, but my husband, my father-in-law, another hunting buddy of my husband's that comes out quite often, they're larger men, very tall, very broad. He does not like them. He runs from them, and my husband, he'll sit with him, and he likes him, but if he's 
talking or moving around with his movements, it freaks Roger out. And he, like, he runs away and hides because he's just a very neurotic little guy. Very neurotic. Like his owner. But that's all. I was just going to chat about him for a minute. And what's cool is I'm also using this mug my grandmother got me right before she passed away. You're a hoot. She knows that I like owls. And again, there's a chip on this one. What's funny is I was just shopping the other day and I saw a bunch of mugs. So I was looking at all of them. And one of them said, it was just a black mug and it said, I'm why we can't have nice things. And it had a chip on it. And I thought that was so funny. And I would have bought it, but I don't need to buy a chip mug. All my mugs are already chipped. Drinking coffee, of course. I was out of my flavored coffee, so it's just regular regular coffee today, which is kind of a bummer. I love flavored coffee because I can't do dairy, and so I do buy flavored coffees so I can have like a treat instead of just plain boring coffee. I have lots of stuff to show y'all today, it seems. I've got some past objects that I finished, some new objects that I finished. I do have some stash enhancement, guiltily, no by November, epic fail, epic fail at no by November. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to talk about one of my old finished objects, and this is just a headband, and it was a free pattern. I want to say it was on the Moogly blog, but I'm not sure. I could probably find it and link it in the Ravelry group if someone wants to make it. It is crocheted. And I used acrylic yarn, and you can't see it, but the white is actually sparkly. Sparkly yarn. So I made this for Trella. I actually made three. I made one for me, one for Trella, and one for Prudence this past Valentine's Day. So we would have just something cute to wear. And these whipped up so fast. Like, you can make 20 of these for Christmas presents in no time at all if you're a a decent crocheter. But it's just, you know, a basic pattern. And again, it was a free pattern if I remember correctly. And I'll be sure to link this. But Atrella wore this to school the other day because the weather has been getting colder. And her teacher saw it. And her teacher knows that she's new to knitting. And she asked her, will you please make me uh, a headband like that? Or a headband. And Atrella said sure. So she picked up her knitting again. And her little knitting bag is a bag that I got in a swap that Andre Sue Knit, or Andy from the Andre Sue Knits podcast, made for me. And I just thought this was a really cute bag, and Atrella really loves it. And it's got this little girl knitting. She got this button at Stitches, Texas, and she learned to knit that the day that we went to Stitches, so. And she has made a little bit of progress on her acrylic headband. Now she's still, she was knitting this for her friend and then she changed her mind. She's got, I'm sorry, she's got some thread in here. Unraveling. I don't know why she has thread in here. I told her to keep her stuff separate, but she's got all of her crafts, her crochet hook, her sewing stuff. Just, it's a random jumble of craft supplies in there. So this is just some acrylic yarn that she picked up at Stitches. I bought her these needles after she said she wanted to try circulars. I think these are Addy size 9, so a 5.5 millimeter. But she decided that she wanted to bead this, so she popped in a bead right there with a crochet hook. I was pretty impressed that she decided to do that. And she also noticed that her gauge is, or her tension, is loosening. So over here is pretty tight, and then over here is getting fairly loose. And she picked this up the other night, and we were watching a movie, and she was knitting, 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 knitting. And she stopped, and she said, does it look like I made any progress? And when she started, she was about here. And I explained to her what a progress keeper was for. And I said, if you hook one of your progress keepers to where, right where you are now, you'll be able to see the progress that you make. So she did that, and... She isn't very far, but I think it's really great for a nine, almost ten-year-old 
and I couldn't be happier about her wanting to make her teacher something, her teacher inspiring her to pick up her knitting again, because she's been reading quite a lot lately, which is great too, but you know, I want her to knit with me. <laughs> Take another sip. I also hung up my leaf bunting that I finished in here so you guys could kind of look at it. And I don't want to pull it down to do a close-up. It was just a bunch of scrap sock fingering yarn that I had. So they're all different colors, red, orange, browns for fall leaves. And then I attached them to a, the pattern is a crochet maple leaf. And there's a video on YouTube and there's also a written pattern. And then the branch, I just did a chainless foundation single crochet and then you know stitch the leaves to that and it's usually hanging under my bar under my kitchen bar but then I moved it in here so you guys could see it also this is a mosaic that I did about nine years ago this is our um, it's a TV tray and I had four TV trays and I was going to this mosaic shop um, a million years ago back when we lived in town and I have made several mosaic things and then got the idea I really like the artist Salvador Dali and I got the idea to kind of decoupage one of his paintings to the top of one of my tray tables and mosaic the top of it and that's what I did I did two of the four and then we moved and my supplies you know got shoved to the side because I had a young child and I didn't have a place to cut glass anymore. So I think once we get moved into our our home that we're remodeling, I'll probably have a little craft area set up and maybe get back into mosaicing because it is something that I really enjoy doing. And I will grab this just a little bit closer. You can see it's heavy. It's heavy because I mean it's glass and um, grout and everything else, but there we go. So it's one of Salvador Dali's paintings, if you know, it's just my take on it, so it's not exact, but I really enjoyed mosaicing when I used to do it all the time. But you know, it's not really a good craft for young children. Now that my children are older and can be told hey, don't touch the glass, it's going to slice your finger. I can do more projects like that. So, I also have another finished object. I showed you all the start of this, and then I ripped it out completely because my gauge was just way too loose. I need to realize, reading patterns, I am never going to have, I'm never going to use the needle the pattern is saying. I usually have to size down at least two sizes, which I've been watching a lot of the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast, and Jenny has talked about this as well, ha having a, an extremely loose tension or a knitting very loose and having to size down three, two to three needle sizes on most patterns, which is, it seems like a lot. Like, how can my <laughs> tension and gauge be so much differently? Same yarn, same needles, but hands make different stitches. That's just really amazing to me. But so this hat, I originally started it, I believe, on size six needles, which is what the pattern asked for. And then I sized down to US size four, which is a 3.5 millimeter, I want to say. And I knit this on deep ends because I started it with um, circulars. But I don't know, I just, I really like DPNs. I have a 16 inch circular and it works well enough, but I like DPNs. Is that crazy? So this hat, isn't it gorgeous? I just love this yarn. I want to knit a sweater with this yarn. This is the Madeline Tosh colorway Charred. And this is DK Twist. And the hat was a free pattern on Ravelry called the Basic Baby Hat, I think. And I typed in DK Weight Yarn because that's what I had. And when my friend asked for a baby hat for her, a hat for her baby, I asked her what colors she wanted, and she said charcoal and orange. Isn't that perfect? God, I love this yarn. It's a really
really beautiful colorway. And here's what I have. So I've been knitting my fall gloves out of this too. I just oh, love that. Oh, look, my nails match. I didn't even notice that. That's exciting. So, yeah. Just a basic baby hat. And I think I want to knit her or crochet her maybe a little animal to go with the hat. And I really need to send this off because today's her due date. She hasn't had her baby yet, but today is her due date. And he needs a little hat. And I will have to ship it because she doesn't live local to me anymore. She has since moved to El Paso. So this will be in the mail soon. What's something else? I'm not real sure. I was thinking about maybe doing like a shark or a rhinoceros out of this. But I did want to knit my husband a hat. But I'm not sure that I have enough now. Who knows? Who knows what I'll do? I also have another finished object to show you. It is in here. My honeycomb hat. So this is a free pattern on Ravelry, the Tweety Honeycomb Toque. And I did adjust the pattern quite a bit. It says to cast on 80 stitches. I cast on 104, I think. And I would have, I knit the brim longer. It says to knit one and a half inches. I did three. And I would have added a cable pattern repeat, but I didn't have enough yarn. I showed y'all last time that I was like playing yarn chicken and I didn't even think that I had had enough to finish. But I did have enough to finish the hat and have the teeniest micro palm. And let me show you how much yarn I have left. Yeah. So this was a bit of yarn chicken. And the yarn I used was Mad Montage Tosh Chunky, which is 100% superwash, and the colorway is Glazed Pecan. Perfect for Thanksgiving. And I will put it on. It didn't turn out exactly like I wanted, which is a bummer. Had I just bit the bullet and bought another skein of yarn. I could have done the repeat and I could have had a bigger palm like I wanted, but I didn't feel that I would use enough of the chunky yarn to justify buying another skein. I was going to use like a fourth of that skein and have all this extra and what was I going to do with it? It's chunky yarn. There's not a lot that you can make. So I, I just decided to settle. So I did want to be able to fold up my brim, and I can't, but I'm pretty happy with it overall. I have worn it out in the mornings when it's chilly, and it keeps me very warm. This one by one ribbing keeps the wind off my ears, and I like it. I love the colors, and I think it turned out really well. I did enter this into the Junk Yarns Cable Along with Kimper from the Junk Yarn Podcast. She's hosting a cable along, so I entered that into her cable along. And I also, this is my first project of the Make Two Along with Ginny of the Tiny Paper Foxes Podcast. So I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited about how it turned out. And I will leave it on for a second so I can show you how much it matches my gloves that are also for my Make Two Along. And this is so pathetic because I should be done with these. But I stole the needles to knit this hat. So I put these on separate needles, stole them, knit the hat, and then put them back on and then knit some more. But I have my, my balls tucked in here for safekeeping. So let me pull those out so I can show you. So you see how far along I am. I basically have... Five more rounds of the fair aisle left and then the ribbing and then I have to add in the thumb. I have my waist yarn for adding in the thumb, which this is my first time doing the waist yarn thing. This is my first color work project. So a lot of firsts went into this. I bought a kit of minis at my local yarn shop and they included the charred colorway. This is Daffodil 
and then either cardinal or tart because they had two reds in there. One was cardinal and one was tart, and I'm not sure which I used. But I just thought these were perfect for fall in love gloves. And they match my hat for my make two along. And they also go really nicely with my farmhouse shawl that's red. So that's pretty nice that it's all matchy without being overly matchy matchy because it's not the exact same color but it goes it coordinates really well also and I have that in my mommy sew project bag this is my favorite bag currently it is the little red riding hood Russian doll fabric and what's really cool is he's got like little fork and knife with salt and pepper He's waiting to eat, Granny. What I thought was really cool, I didn't notice how much blue was in this fabric until I popped in my Notions pouch that Nicole from the Hugh Loco podcast sent with a um, bag purchase. So this was just like my little free gift. And I really love this cat fabric. It's got ballerina cat, crafty cat, ice skating cat, bookworm cat, and it's just so cute. And she had on this blue zipper pull, and I added Prudence's elephant that I use when I work on her project. So the mitts are the heart cookie mitts by Mary Jane Mucklestone. Is that how you say that? Heart and cookie mitt. And it is a paid pattern, but I think it's gorgeous, and I would knit these for gifts. I kind of have the second knit syndrome currently, because I don't really want to finish this other one. But I know once I get done with them, I'll wear them a lot. My hands are always cold in the fall, and I actually like to have fingerless mitts over fingered gloves, because I'm so cold. So cold-natured. But that is that project. Hopefully it will be... It will be done, but it just seven rows, maybe eight rows. That's nothing, y'all. I need to sit down and do that. I also, I'm going to take a sip. And peek out my project notes. Another thing I want to say about my hat is I inspired one of the Knit Night ladies to make the same thing. So when she pulled out her hat last night at midnight, they all were like, well, that looks strangely familiar because I just showed off my finished project. And she is pretty far along and she's trying to rip hers out. And it looks way better than mine. She's a tight knitter. I'm a loose knitter. And her cable, like, let me show you mine. So you see it's just kind of elongated. Hers are tight, and I really like the way hers looks better than mine. But she's to the decreases and having a heck of a time, and I kind of did too, um, mostly because we added stitches, and it's not, the math isn't adding up, and you kind of have to make adjustments. Sorry, I have to spread on my leg. You have to make adjustments for that, but I told her what I did was just sort of guess so on which orientation the cable was supposed to be facing and then she hasn't she did buy another extra ball of yarn and she plans to do a big palm so I told her it's not even going to matter you're not going to see the top of the crown you could even do a regular crown decrease and not even have to worry about matching up the cables but this was a fun knit very quick I knit it twice because the first one was too small ripped it out re-knit it and I'm overall happy, really happy with this hat, and I'd probably knit it again, just because I really like the cables, and I might try to <laughs> uh, pay attention to my gauge and knit a lot tighter so mine actually look as tight as hers do. And I'm not, I mean, it looks good, but if you saw hers, I think that you would agree that it's better. What else? Um, I... 
I'll go ahead and show you. Finish showing my projects, my other whips, before I talk about other things. So, this is not working out very well. I am working on the dragon neck warmer out of this book, Crochet Ever After. And I got this book last year for my birthday so I could crochet this dragon neck warmer for a Trello because I knew she would love it. Well, I am forcing myself to work on this because I have no crochet love whatsoever currently. And I'm not knocking crochet. Crochet is great and it has a lot of purpose for a lot of things. I just really enjoy knitting. And so I've been having to force myself to work on this. I got the two little nostril pieces done and I think this is like the bottom lip or something. And I started the head and was having a heck of a time with my stitch count. And I am, I would say, an advanced, a very advanced crocheter. I've sold my crochet work, I've entered it into fairs and won prizes. I mean, I'm a very advanced crocheter. I can make things up. Not, I can't write a pattern just because I don't have the patience to sit there and count every stitch and make sure it's all just so. But I could. I could da design a pattern for crochet easily. So I knew it wasn't me because I was reading the directions correctly. I was talking at knit night last night on how frustrated I was that my stitch count was off. And they asked me if I had checked to see if there was a errata, I think is what they called, which I'd never heard that before, and I was like, a what? And it's a errata on, on Ravelry. A lot of times if a pattern has a mistake, there's a correction. And so there was. I went, read the project pattern notes, and there are several uh, typos or the stitch counts off on on a couple of these patterns in this book. So that's a bit frustrating to like sit down with your book, be ready, have all your yarn, have your projects, and then run into problems. I know it happens and I'm not knocking the designer. I think everything in this book is gorgeous and I would like to make almost all of it. But it's just a disappointment to have to troubleshoot when you think that you have this, this recipe and all you have to do is follow the instructions and ta-da, you have a finished object, but no, because you have to troubleshoot. That's frustrating for me. I knit for relaxation in a, or crochet. I work with yarn for relaxation. And if I'm having to do math to figure things out, that's not relaxing to me. <laughs> and it's frustrating. So this is all I have done. <laughs> Isn't that sad? And the yarn I'm using for this is Cascade Superwash 220, and I really like this yarn. It's, it's nice for the price point. I'm doing the body and head in this, and then the contrasting colors. And the green. And these are Trello's favorite colors. These are specifically the ch colors she chose. But yeah, it's just not getting a lot of love currently because it's crochet and I ran into some problems and I don't want to have to figure it out. So I set it to the side and I said, I'm not going to figure you out. And that's in my A Homespun House project bag with my little coyotes and jackrabbits and prickly pears. Love that bag. Mostly because it's what's outside my door. Ooh, what else? I do have some stash enhancement, like I said, because I'm a cheater, a no good cheater of my yarn diet. No by November. It's not entirely my fault, though. Not entirely. So, what else? I have a Trello's Harry Potter socks, and I went to the mall got my husband a house shirt so he could wear a shirt to the party. I went to Hot Topic and got some Harry Potter stuff. It was awesome and they had buttons. I suspect the Nargles are behind it. <laughs> and I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. So I had to get these little buttons for her project bag. 
so she could have some flair. And you can see that I'm not very far on these. Why? Because I had to redo them. So here's the first that I started. And I started knitting these on size 1 carbons, which is a... The thing always rubs off. I don't know. Two, one point, I don't know what it is. In millimeters, guys, it's a size 1 in U.S. That's what it is. Started knitting these on size 1. And I thought that it was kind of gappy and loose. But I was like, hmm, I bet it'd be fine. Why did I say that? Because... I'm stubborn. This would fit my husband. Like, this is wide enough and big enough to fit him. And they're meant for a cello. So I was bummed, and I was like, this isn't working. So I restarted them on size zeros. And these are the Platina Nova Cubics, which I told you at first I really loved them, and now that I'm a carbon user, those are what I really like. And the, the cubics are okay, but I'd rather have a size zero carbons. But I don't. I need to get some. So these are on size zero. And I could probably even size down to a double zero. I think there, I think there's a such thing as double zero. Because, and then I would have to up my stitch count. Uh, this is 64 stitches. This is 64 stitches. Do you see the difference in that? Isn't that crazy? If I did zeros, I'd probably have to up my stitch count, but just for fabric density, I think it would be good. This is really skinny fingering weight yarn. And this is the Post Yarn in Colorway Bravery, which is self-striping. And they have a couple of the different house colors. And the pattern I'm using is the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern. Which, of course, you have to knit Hermione socks in Gryffindor house colors. And what's funny is one of the knit, knit night girls was like, why not just knit vanilla socks? Who cares? It's self-striping. I complained because I was like, well, the self-striping doesn't really show off the pattern very well. And she said, well, why don't you just knit vanilla? And I was like, but the Hermione socks need to be, or the Gryffindor socks need to be Hermione socks. And one of my Knit Night friends agreed. She was like, you need to keep doing Hermione. So thanks, Melissa. You're my kind of people because you get it. You get These need to be Hermione socks. And I really like the pattern. Super simple. Free pattern on Ravelry. I think something like 2,000 people have knit these socks. So very, very nice pattern. Mindless knit. Just as easy as vanilla socks, but then you get this cool little textured stitch. And I cannot wait to get to the hill flap because it's um, a modified eye of partridge. And anytime I see that hill flap on everyone's socks that post them, I'm really intrigued by the design because it looks quite amazing. So that brings me to the end of my works in progress, kind of, because next is stash enhancement, and I have some works in, or finished objects that kind of go with that. I got my friend, Melissa, of the Spicy Homemaker podcast. Her and I have been chatting the past couple of weeks. We plan to do an ornament swap, which I'm so excited about, and she told me about the Buffalo Wool Company. And that they had given her a discount code for her viewers. If you use the code SPICY, you get 10% off. And I saw the Buff Buffalo Wool Company while I was at Stitches. I perused their um, van that they had and looked at their yarn. And I really did want to get some minis, but I blew my budget on other stuff. So I never went back and got minis. But as soon as Melissa talked about the discount. I immediately went online, started perusing their website, and found this. It's a mini loom, the Buffalo Wool Company, and it comes with this little um, tapestry needle in your frame. And I was looking online, I really wanted to try weaving, and I was looking online, and you can make these out of like cardboard or even wood if you were crafty like that. 
But I just thought this was thirty dollars and it came with three mini skeins. I only have two here because the other one's in the other room. It came with three mini skeins and the wood loom for thirty dollars. But with the discount code, it was like twenty-seven dollars including shipping. And what was really cool, something that I didn't know until after I got the shipping notification, Buffalo Wool Company is local to me. I knew they were in Texas, vaguely, but I didn't know they were like in the next county over, basically. This came, I have ordered it on Tuesday, Tuesday after I got home from the doctor. It was in my mailbox on Wednesday. Holy fast shipping, Batman. I really, really, really like this. I immediately sat down and used some of the minis that they sent and made this little thing. And they call it a mug rug or coaster. And it is so cute. And it's far from perfect. But gosh, this was fun. And it took me like no time at all to do this. And this is their blue skies habit. Buffalo Skies, 50% bison, 50% wool. And it's really rustic feeling. It's pretty cool. I wouldn't do anything next to skin, I don't think, with it because it's got a, a prickle factor. But it's pretty cool and rustic. It would be really awesome for like an outerwear jacket. There's my first weaving experience. I'm a weaver, y'all. And then the biggest reason why I wanted to get the loom is to showcase some of my hand spun. So as a beginner um, spinner, my yarns aren't the best. Some of them are underplied, some of them are overplied, underspun, etc., etc., like you do when you're new. And instead of just making some ridiculous knit or crochet thing that doesn't really look right because it's wonky hand spun. I was reading and a lot of flaws and errors can be hidden with hand spun if you weave it. And so I made another mug rug and this is some hand spun that I got from the spinning box. I think it was, I can't remember, I don't want to butcher the name, Prasmatic Fibers I want to say. That might not be right. So this was some fiber that I got in the spinning box and it was a like a ball of prepped fiber. So it was a mix of some alpaca, some wool, some other stuff. And the colors are really cool. It's like this chocolate and mint green. And it's a mug rug. <laughs> the, the term mug rug just cracks me up. When I was showing Tim what I was weaving, he was like, what is it? I said, it's a mug rug. He wasn't impressed either. <laughs> but while I was doing it, Prudence was watching me, my five-year-old Prudence, and she was so intrigued. And she goes, you know, I could do that. And I said, you're right, you could, because it's ridiculously easy. And this is actually called a stash blaster, because you could take all your scraps and make mug rugs, guys, for Christmas presents. Hello. And so next week, when she's off of school all week, I think I'm going to sit her down and let her, let her play with the loom, too. And this is perfect, I mean, to stick in your project, your current project bag, take some minis, that way your child has something to do while you're sitting waiting at the doctor or for a table at a restaurant, whatever. It's something that will keep them occupied in the car and it doesn't take any, you hear Lucy crying, she's at the door crying. It doesn't take any, um, it doesn't take very much yarn, so it's very easy, very easy and fun. Get a loom, y'all. Get a loom. We can all be weavers. So that was my, I cheated because I had a discount thing, but we all know I cheated because I'm a, I'm a cheater. I'm a cheater, y'all. Last sip, because now my coffee's cold. But then when I went to knit night yesterday, I needed needles. I talked about wanting to knit the Atwood Shaw by Nicole Clark. And this is a pay pattern. I really want to knit that shawl, but I needed needles. So I did go ahead and pick up some needles. 
And when you're buying needles, you cannot not buy yarn. So something I got, I meant to bring the book, but I didn't. Prudence and Atrella have a bedtime story called One Mitten. And basically the little girl goes throughout the story with this one mitten that can do one mitten things, like make a puppet and etc, etc. Then until she gets to the end and she finds her other mitten. And then two mittens can clap, two mittens can whatever the book says. After I got done reading it the other night, Prudence said, you know, I think I need yellow mittens, which is what color the mittens are in the book. And as I mentioned, she's really cold-natured, and she gets really cold while we wait on the bus. And so I thought I would knit her some yellow mittens. So I grabbed these two mini skeins of DK weight, and this is Madeline Tosh. Candle wick is the colorway. Yeah, and these are 50 yards apiece. I'm not sure if this will be enough to knit her mittens. She's five, so she's got tiny little hands. But if not, I can always pick up another mini next time I go to midnight. And I probably won't cast these on until after I get done with the Trello's birthday present. So, it's just something to have. I also got a red mini, and this is the colorway tart, to make some birds of happiness for Christmas ornaments. I um, talked to my mom and my sister about not exchanging gifts anymore because we're adults. I mean, we can generally buy what we want, and it's stressful, and the holidays aren't about presents, and it's stressful to have to feel like you have to go shopping and get the person this really thoughtful present. It's just anxiety-inducing for me, so I thought about doing an ornament swap. I mentioned the Spicy Homemaker, Melissa and I are doing an ornament swap, and I also signed up with Molly of a Homespun House. She's doing a Yuletide swap, and I signed up for that, and it says that you have to make a handmade ornament. So I got the idea to ask my mom if she would be interested in, instead of doing gifts from here on, to do an ornament exchange every Christmas, and that's still like you're getting something for your loved one, and that way they're, you know, cherishing, cherishing it each year as they hang that ornament on the tree. So I'm going to knit some red birds of happiness. I do have more minis of this color, and I don't know how much it will take. I haven't knit a bird of happiness. I started one and then had to rip it out because I walked away from it and lost where I was. I also got some more Christmas sock yarn because I couldn't resist it. So I'm not usually a white person. And I kind of looked and looked and looked for some different yarn. But this is really, they didn't have very much Christmas, Christmassy options. This is called mistletoe. And it's got red flakes and green flakes, like speckles. Speckled, very speckled yarn. And I'm definitely going to knit the Hermione's Everyday Socks with this yarn. And the biggest reason why I got this is because the post, the Christmas yarn I currently have is the post holiday, it's post yarn and it's called Holly Jolly Texas. It's self-striping. I'm not in love with the yarn. Knitting a Trella's Harry Potter Socks. This is the same yarn, the post yarn. It's not my favorite to work with. And while I will still knit those socks and wear them, I wanted some really nice Madeline Tosh Twist Light, which is their superwash nylon base. Great for socks. Yeah, I needed this. And I also am so enabled by all the podcasters. Melissa just, again, the Spicy Homemaker podcast. This is going to be the Spicy Homemaker podcast fangirl episode. She just did a giveaway on her page, or on her podcast, and she showed off some different yarns that she was giving away, and one of them was Jinx yarn. Now, Laura from The Dyer's Notebook, and also The Dyer Behind Jinx Yarns, I've heard of her podcast. I've heard of her yarns. I saw her at Stitches Texas, but didn't know who she was then. 
uh, well, since two weeks ago when she showed off that yarn, Melissa from the Spicy Homemaker podcast showed off some Jinx yarn, I've been kind of addicted to Jinx, and I've been stalking her at the page waiting for this Christmas Lights to be restocked. She has this Christmas Lights colorway, and it's a red and gray self-striping that's sparkly. I'm coveting that yarn so bad, and I have made a promise, guys, since I fell so epically at No By November, I will buy one more skein of yarn this year, and that is the Christmas Lights colorway from Jinx. That's it. Maybe some needles if I need them, because you always need needles and patterns. So that, that, that doesn't count. But no more yarn and no more project bags until after the first of the year. Can I do it, y'all? Probably not, but who cares? I love yarn, and I knit a lot, so it's cheaper than therapy? That's my excuse. That's my excuse. I also got these. I mentioned going to the doctor the other day, and I have to get some testing done, which is no fun. And I was feeling kind of bummed about that. I just don't like the doctor, and I needed some retail therapy. So I did go into Hobby Lobby, and I got some more stitch marker making stuff, but I won't show those because I'm going to include those in some swaps I'm doing. And then I went into, there was, I never go to this town where I, I had to go to the doctor. It's a specialist, so I had to drive an hour and a half away. And it, I went to Wichita Falls. And they have a Joann's. No, no. Maybe they have a Joann's. I don't know. I didn't Google that. They have a Hobby Lobby and a Hancock's and a Michael's all within, like, <laughs> two blocks of each other. So, of course, I went to all three. I got stitch marker makings at Hobby Lobby. I got these at Hancock's because I needed pom-pom makers. And they did have some Yarnology brand pom-pom makers at Hobby Lobby, but I really wanted the Clover brand. And this is the large and this is the grand. Um, Kat from Kat's Katrina from Kat's Kettle Podcast, or Yarn 30 Podcast and Kat's Kettle Etsy Shop. Just bought some pom-pom makers and was making pom-poms for her hats, and I told her about the giant pom maker that my Knit Night Shop has. Knit Night Shop? My local yarn store has. But I didn't really have a need for a pom the size of my hand, a pom-pom the size of my palm. But I did like these, and so I got these. Can't beat them. And I made <laughs> my micro pom with this mini one. And I didn't have very much yarn, so what I did was one wrap really tightly all the way around, and I was pushing my wraps, pushing my wraps that way. And what I didn't think about was the fact that I probably could have thrown another color of yarn in there, and it would have been fine, and I could have had a thicker palm. I didn't think about it, and I could probably take this off, but then I don't have any more of this color to add to it. So... It is what it is. That's all I have. My stash enhancement is done. I'm a no good, dirty, rotten liar for saying that I would do no by November, and then I failed. So sorry about that, Jules. I was doing no by November with Jules from Diary of a Yarn Snob. If you haven't checked out her podcast, you should. She's hilarious, and I really enjoy watching her. But that's all that I have. I am really excited for this weekend. Um, we did, oh, you know what? That's not all I have. I want to tell you all a quick story because I totally forgot about it. We had a Prudence's birthday party this past weekend, and I showed you all her socks that I knit her. She loved her mermaid. She named her Lacey, the mermaid. And another story that I had about the socks were I knit those on my DPNs, like I do because I love DPNs. And I had the socks sitting on the side of my bed. My husband and I were goofing off, messing around on the bed. And suddenly, I turn over and there is needles sticking in me. So one side of one needle went in right here on my leg. And one side of the other needle went into the top of my knee. And that one stuck. 
So let me grab my needle so I can show you how far it was stuck in me. I'm just going to pull this out one second. So these were the ones that stabbed me. My carbon size ones, very dangerous, very sharp tip. And it was inside my leg that deep. Isn't that insane? It punctured me, y'all. Bringing double penetration to a whole new level of meaning. I got poked by my poor little needle. And so I did talk to my doctor about it and got poked again because he made me get a tetanus shot. So, yeah, that was not fun. Be careful. This is your public service announcement. DPN users, please be careful. And what's funny is Tim doesn't really like me knitting in the car. When I first started knitting, he was very apprehensive about it. He's like, you know, that doesn't look safe. I'd much rather you crochet. You, you have these. Let me show you how I knit in the car. He said that I had these needles positioned directly at my face and that if we were to get into a car accident, I would die. He thinks I would die because I would stab myself in the eye or the brain with my needles. So this is how I knit in the car. I'm going to see where I am at. So I'm just sitting here like this, right, with these like right about my face. Yes. If we did get into a car accident, I would probably poke my throat or my eyeball and it would not be pleasant. But that's only if we get into a car accident. So I told him, just drive carefully and I don't have to worry about poking my face. But yeah, those your, there's your perfect public service announcement for any of you DPN users out there. Be careful. These guys are sharp and they will try to poke you when you least expect it. When you're just minding your own business, fooling around with your husband, you will, you will be shocked by what your knitting needles can do to you and ruin the whole mood. I was traumatized. I looked at my needles in a whole new light after that. I was like, how could you betray me? My poor needles. But that was just a funny story that I forgot to share with y'all last time that I wanted to share with y'all this time. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope that y'all enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see y'all next time. Bye.